Hiya people, it's me TFL Wilderness. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this month's end of month bot haul where I show you all the transformer related items that I've picked up throughout the month. Um, yeah, it's not a particularly um, great or large haul. I've only got 11 items to show you, um, but uh, there is some interesting items here. Um, so hopefully, you know, <laughs> you might find it a bit interesting, some of the bits I've picked up. Um, I will probably be filling out this video with some excessive talky bits, so I don't know how long this is going to run out to because, you know, I need to talk at length about some of the items I've bought. Um, yeah, so let's get on with it, shall we? Right, so, May, uh, what happened this month? Um, to be honest, it was a bit of a struggle, especially towards the, the middle of the month, because I'm kind of, well, how can I put this? If you're a habitual collector and, you know, with specific tastes, and then, you know, eventually it stands to reason that you're going to run out of things to buy or collect. And that was kind of the case this month, um, especially for official stuff. And also, when it comes to third-party stuff, I mean, the, the current situation with international shipping uh, delays is really putting me off buying, you know, stuff from the Far East. And another factor that's coming into play recently, um, I've noticed that on certain websites like eBay, AliExpress and a few other websites, um, the UK government is imposing VAT payments or VAT charges on your online purchases, and which means you have to pay an extra 20% on top of the price you're already paying for the bot. And some of these prices are included in certain eBay items that you buy, and but AliExpress, they sort of add it on once you've bought your item, they add it on the on the back, and it just makes everything twenty percent more expensive. And that reason is making me less, you know, <laughs> it's sort of putting me off buying international items at the moment, you know, because it means I'm just paying over the odds for things without even you know, without even trying. But uh, anyway, enough said about that. Let's see what I have got now. The first item to arrive arrived on the 1st, and it was a pre-order that I placed in February. Um, I've done an unboxing on it, and uh, yeah, it's Iron Factory IF EX44 City Commander Final Battle, or their IDW Ultra Magnus. Now, this is allegedly the biggest figure that, biggest heaviest figure that Iron Factory have ever done. Um, like I said, I pre-ordered this from um, TF Direct. It's only the second item I bought from TF Direct back in February. And when I pre-ordered it, I thought at the time they had it in stock because this figure got released, you know, sort of like beginning of the year. And it said when I placed my order, it said, you know, it says oh, I've got, you know, they've got you know, seven left or whatever it was. So I placed my order and then I was waiting for you know, the shipping notification, but it didn't come. When I checked on my account, it, it turned out it was a pre-order slot that I bought rather than an actual figure in stock and that annoyed me slightly and it took them well I mean it didn't arrive till like the 1st of May and I ordered it on the 1st of February so February you know March April May so it's took three months for me to get hold of this thing and it's like how come it took TF Direct so long to get this figure in stock when a lot of the other retailers had already been and sold their allocation of this figure it's <laughs> And it makes me reluctant to buy from TF Direct because, you know, this is only the second item I've bought from them. And, and it's like the first item I bought, I had unnecessary shipping delays. But yeah, they do free shipping, so to speak. But um, anyway, enough about that. The figure, it's it's fairly big, fairly chunky. Um, Ultra Magnus, I like Ultra Magnus. It's one of my favourite figures. And of course, being the IDW Ultra Magnus, he also comes with an extra little figure of this guy. Um, he hasn't actually got a name for this figure. Um, but obviously it's Minimus Ambus from the IDW. Um, we know Mr. Mr. Borders Dude doesn't appreciate this guy very much because he's got this figure and he says, oh, we'll be put, keeping this guy in the box, you know. And I don't blame him because, you know, the, the IDW, you know, Ultra Magnus where they made it that, you know, this guy was some sort of like like little mini bot who's like a, a load lifter and he can actually wear this, this, this super powered up armour and um, become, you know, a bigger figure. Um, bit weird. I mean, IDW Ultra Magnus to me is like it. What what, what is he? Is the um, what's his name? His title? Um, 
Duly appointed enforcer of the Tyrestor Corps. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, that's the sort of Ultra Magnus that I like. But the fact that he's got this little dude inside sort of controlling this power armour, is, 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 it is a bit strange. I could take it or leave it. I mean, the IDW continuity that these figures are from is, is now gone. It's it's obsolete. It's it's you know, So you're never going to see probably Minimus Ambus ever again. So, you know. But, um, yeah, this figure's really good. It's chunky. It's you no know, typical um, Iron Factory build quality. It's really neatly engineered. It's got a, a very sp specific aesthetic going on. Um, but, no, it's, a, it's an awesome figure, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad I added it to my collection. And uh, I haven't really got room for it to go in the detail with the other sort of um, you know, Ultra Magnus figures. But, uh, yeah, so I, I got that go. That uh, got this guy arrived finally on the uh, first of the month. Right, so then the next thing to arrive um, was on the uh, the sixth, and it is a, uh, a comic. It is Transformers eighty four Legends and Rumors. Now, I saw this was coming out, and uh, I thought. I thought this was a, a, a continuation of the Secrets and Lies storyline, but it, it isn't. This is actually um, a collection of uh, you know, pre-released material put together in, in, in a volume. Now, those people who bought the Secrets of 1984 Secrets and Lies miniseries, they didn't have... Uh, where is it? Yeah. They didn't have this, which is the uh, Transformers 84 issue zero one shot. Now, this reprints this. So in the back, you've got this is actually in the back of this. So I've already got this, so I've got it again in this. So that's kind of a little disappointing. However, they have also reprinted the original G1 storylines from G1, you know, the, the Marvel G1 issue one comic where they, you know, they left Cybertron and crash landed on Earth. That is reprinted in here, which is really interesting. And they've also, they've also reprinted the entire Man of Iron storyline and oh ah oh, that that brought back some memories for me because i used to collect the marvel g1 comics back in the day in fact you know to me my tra g1 transformers was the marvel g1 comics because i didn't care for the cartoon series and still don't um and i didn't really get many of the official toys because my my transformer toys had was it was a mixed bag of uh official um sort of well, you wouldn't call them third party, but you know, knockoffs and, and and other figures. I mean, I had, I had some Diaclone figures in my collection when I was a kid. And go figure. <laughs> but um, yeah, they've reprinted the Man of Iron storyline, which is absolutely awesome because you know I lost my G1 comics, and now I've kind of got some of them back with this. So I don't mind the fact that this is all reprinted material. Um, okay, yeah, that's been reprinted. I've got that, but the other stuff that's in it is stuff that I've lost. And now I've got it back. So that, that was great. This whole concept behind this Transformers 84, where, you know, they got a couple of guys together. They got, um, you know, Simon Furman, um, Guido Guidi, and um, John Paul Bove. And they did this comic strip in the style of the original Marvel G1 comics. I, I was right on board with that because, you know, I've got such a, a warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feeling for the Marvel G1 comics, even though the modern comics are pretty good, but. No, this this is this is this was right up my alley. Even though it's reprinted stuff, you know, it was worth getting, especially for the reprint of the Man of Iron storyline. You know, however, there are discrepancies between the new sort of Secrets and Lies storyline and the original, you know, storylines from the Marvel G One comic, and and this issue basically highlights those issues because you can go back and see what happened in the original comic strip and then see that the new version. And it's like, whoa, 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 there's discrepancies here, you know, and I really want to take this to a convention in the future and get it signed by, you know, Simon Furman, Guido Guidi and John Paul Bove. And, but I want to have a word with Simon Furman and just talk to him about the discrepancies that are between the two versions. But uh, it's still a great story and I really appreciate that they went to the trouble to do this. So, yeah, got hold of that. And that arrived on the 6th. And then the next thing to arrive was the first of this month's KTRTs. I actually bought you know, two figures this month because I wanted to finish off the Pentastorm X combiner. So the first one to arrive... Hello, Carbots. No, 
Sky SWAT X. So this is Sky, the, the token fembot from the original series, been rebooted, rehashed. And she's got this, I think, ugly looking robot mode. And the vehicle mode is not much better. Uh, it's got like got like wobbly shoulder joints um yeah and i really really didn't appreciate what they did with sky as a character when they they did this um i mean it's still a, a decent figure i mean it, it, it's solidly made it's got you know it's got ratchet joints and a decent amount of really good articulation for a you no know, korean toy because korean toys usually don't have you know ankle tilts and they don't have you know waist joints and uh, you know, bicep swivels. You know, it's 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 got all that going on. So it's pretty much as articulated as an average transformer toy, and it's quite heavy and chunky, made out of really solid, good quality plastic. But the aesthetic on it just just wasn't to my taste. And uh, because of this, she was in the running for the worst bot I got this month. So just keep that in mind for later on. Then. Um, so she arrived on the 11th, and then the following day, the next KTRT arrived. So, uh, hello Carbots, uh, Fron, yeah, don't forget to call him Fron, not Pron, uh, Fron Police X. So this is Fron, he's like the, uh, the, the police car dude. Um, in the original show, he had like a yellow sort of Hyundai, um, Vanti car, but then he would transform into his police mode and combine with the original Pentastorm. In this version, he's just got a police car mode. Um, yeah, I don't care much for this one either because the excessive kibble on this thing. I mean, look at this this car kibble on his feet, and then the arms are just they've just got the the arm sort of molded on the back of the door, which they have done that before. But the way they do it on this one is just it just doesn't really work as well. I mean, also these chest pieces that don't plug in as well. You know, there's little things like that on it, which which really, I wouldn't have got this were it not for I needed it to complete the combiner. But I did get it, and I have got it now. I've got the combiner. The completed combiner is now on display in my room in the big bot spot. I've swapped him out with um, that uh, Ko Weijang Model Wizard um, Power the Primes uh, Predator King. Swapped it out for that, and uh, now I've got the final part of uh, the Penstorm X in from Police X. Again, he's he's got he's decently articulated, you know, good solid uh, construction, decent paint apps. Even though the car hasn't got quite as many you know sort of police stripes on it as I would have liked, but uh, there we go, got him, and he was the final part of the, uh, you know, Pentstorm X, and he arrived on the twelfth. Now also on the twelfth, uh, something else I saw on eBay and uh, picked up was this guy. Cyberverse Warrior Class Nor, or he's a he's got like a is he, as he's a Warrior Class figure, he's got one of them uh, them gimmicks. Um, hang on, and then we go. Yeah, he's got that. What's it called? A mace mash gimmick. Top of his body spins round. Um, yeah, I wanted to when I saw this was coming out. I wanted to get it because you know I've got the uh, I've got the Titans Return, you know, sort of Legends class. He's a hella bigger, hella chunkier than the uh, the old Legends figure. Um, as he's a Cyberverse figure, his articulation is somewhat uh, restricted. I mean, the legs have like a joint where they they clip in, even though you can unclip it and then get a little bit of articulation out of it. You could shave them pegs off and get a bit more articulation from the legs. It's all right though, um, but because he's one of these late wave Cyberverse figures, they're not really getting general release in the UK. And I just happened upon some eBay seller who who got stock of, of them in, and I, I paid like nearly thirty quid for this guy. It was like twenty seven, twenty eight quid or something like that. A lot of money for what it is, but I was struggling at the time. You know, towards the middle of the month, I was struggling to find things to buy, and it was like, yeah, I'll go for that. So yeah, got him. He's okay for what he is, you know, a Cyberverse figure. And I'm not 100% finished with the Cyberverse line. There's still a few more figures I want to get. I want to get that Ultra Class uh, Skull Cruncher. I'm trying to get hold of that, but it, again, it's not officially getting released in this country. It doesn't appear to. There's plenty of people in America who, uh, who are selling it, but, you know, you've got 
their asking price plus the postage plus you know you have to pay um, you know import duty on it because of the uh, global shipping program so yeah it's, it's like I said it's like with this income tax thing that's been applied to online payments for people who live in the UK you know for, for, for overseas payments it's, 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 it's all that going on and, and it's making buying stuff from overseas like ridiculously expensive and I'm not prepared to go there to be honest you know I, I don't want to pay you no know, I mean I, I've paid over the odds for things before but you know now it's I don't know we'll just have to wait and see but anyway got managed to get hold of him bit pricey but uh, he's an okay figure he's all right and then that was again like I said that was on the uh, the 12th the same day as uh, uh, Fron arrived so moving on to the the next purchases um, right now a couple of days later the 14th so we've got a couple of uh, purchases on uh, this day uh, both from eBay well no one was from eBay one was from Amazon that was it so the eBay purchase is second of this month's third party offerings um, it is a new age NA H23B Haralder. Or in other words, Lord Straxus. Hi, no. Hi, Lord. Uh, what's, his, what's his official title? Hi, Lord Straxus of Polyhex. <laughs> so, yeah. So they, they took their Galvatron mold, their Legends Gal no, New Age took their Le Legends Galvatron mold, and they turned it into Straxus. I could not be more overjoyed because I don't know why. I mean, I've got the uh, the dark mount. I've got this version of Straxus, the official, you know, the, the generations dark mount. This thing, although it doesn't transform into his G1 form, and it's it's, it's obviously based on, on on an Earth vehicle. There's so many nods to the you know the original G1 Straxus on this thing. It is absolutely amazing. It's still transformed into like a you know like an artillery piece. So technically, I mean, it has got his axe, man. You know, it has got all those little red sort of triangle things all over him. I mean, this figure is absolutely awesome, and I love it to bits. But uh, you know, Straxus in the um, in the G1 comic, he wasn't around for very long, and actually, um, kind of thanks these because uh, Secrets and Lies or Transformers 84 Secrets and Lies. You know, Traxus, Straxus got you know he got a, he got an he got another outing again, you know, because Simon Furman showed how Straxus came to power on Cybertron before he basically got blown up and got turned into a head in a jar, you know, and uh, it was really good to see how he, he was basically a pawn put in place by Shockwave on Cybertron to watch over, you know, Cybertron while, you know, Megatron and the rest of the Decepticons were away chasing the Autobots in space, and, um, you know, Straxus being Straxus being the, the big, you know, sort of, tyrannical bully that he is he uh, he basically took over and uh, you know moved into dark man and oh look it's got it's got a smelting pool adjacent i'll take it you know <laughs> it's, it's it's absolutely great i don't know what it is about straxus i just i just really really like him even though he, he's, he's such a a badass you know he, he's a real tyrant and a bully and and, and all that stuff he, you know he's all the, but he's just there's just something about him now this thing obviously it's galvatron's mold it's been slightly reworked and it's in Straxus's colours and when it transforms it's it transforms into a, a slight variation on the Galvatron gun mode which does sort of look like his G1 alt mode I wish they'd have done a little bit more to the alt mode um, I wish they'd have you know instead of having tracks on his on his arms I wish they'd turned him into wheels and had some wheels on the back because he was like a four-wheeled space gun and have the little silver horns on the top, you know. If they'd have made a little bit more effort, they could have really made this thing look like the G1 alt mode from the comic. But compromises had to be made when they was using this mould. And I think what they've done with this is absolutely amazing. It, it really does look like Straxus. And yeah, it transforms into a gun of sorts. You know, like an artillery gun. But I love this thing. This thing is absolutely amazing, and it's New Age. I mean, come on, it's New Age. We all know how good New Age stuff is. I've got, I've got a few New Age figures, and uh, I mean, I've got, I mean, I like this, this, this third party legend stuff that's coming out. You know, New Age, um, Magic Square, and you know, probably some, you know, some of the other companies, but uh, oh, Iron Factory, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, I love this thing. 
I mean, I love the character of Straxus. You know, Straxus is one of my favourite characters from the G1. He had such a... Even though he wasn't in the comics for very long, he had such a lasting impression on me, you know, and uh, I, I just love him. I think he's great. And I had to get this. I had to get this. Now, another thing that I want to put in here just slightly, just, just lately, and like I said about my, my options for buying figures is, like, diminishing, and uh, there's quite a few... Uh, eBay sellers that I used to buy my third party stuff seem to have given up the game. Um, you know, like uh, Mr. Mr. Netclow, he shut up shop. Mr. Animatropolis has gone. And I got this guy from a guy called um, Mascot Zone. And when I bought this, he had hundred early in the month, he had hundreds of items in his shop. And then when I checked up on his shop towards the end of the month, his shop had gone. Zero items on his account. He'd been cleared out. And it's like this has happened to quite a few um, eBayers that I've noticed. They've they've just been shut down. They've disappeared. You know, they've dropped off the face of the earth, or they've 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 basically re removed all their items from sale and just just given up. I don't know why. I'd like to know the reasons why. I wonder whether because they're selling a lot of you know KO and third party stuff, whether the they've been visited by the police, you know, by Hasbro and shutting them down. I I don't know what's going on with these sellers, but um, Badabobo is still going, but for how long? You know, Badabobo might get taken out as well. Um, but yeah, so the last figure I bought from Mr. Mr. Mascot Zone, probably. It's a shame. I don't know what's happened to him, but uh, there you go. Got him. And uh, yeah, he arrived on the 14th, as did this next item. Now, um, obviously, I showed you, you know, what's his face? I got... Cyberverse nor and there's another Cyberverse figure that's been that came out that I was interested in getting it's um one of these battle call figures you know these battle call figures which um, have a a little light a little voice activated light up gimmick in the chest and they have like you no know, sort of energy you no know, transparent energy on armor pieces you plug onto them and uh, when you look at the the episodes from uh, you know Cyberverse season three you had that one episode where you got this new character that was introduced called Wild Wheel. And he's like he's like this this cowboy dude. He was an Autobot who went with you know Optimus Prime to Earth in, in like you know the eighteen hundreds, you know, during the times of the cowboy, and he got left behind by Optimus. You know, Optimus escaped or, or left the planet and left left Wild Wheel behind. And Wild Wheel became really un you know you know, angry and disgruntled about being abandoned by Optimus, and that he's he's travelled through time, you know, try trying to find him again, and he basically took on the persona of the, you know, a, a badass, you know, sort of like cowboy bounty hunter type dude, and he you know, had a had a duster, a duster on and a, and a ten gallon hat, and you know he was he was a you know, he was a quick shot, you know, he, he, with his uh, with his guns, and when I saw that I was bringing a toy of this thing out, I was interested in getting it, but because it was part of this, um. Uh, battle call gimmick one he's a very simplistic figure he's very hollow doesn't look very good he's got you know he's, he's very cheaply made and uh it was quite expensive for what he is they were asking 25 quid for it and um i just couldn't spend that amount of money for that figure but anyway looking on amazon towards the you know sort of like the middle of the month i noticed i mean this is again what i was having struggling to find things to buy and i noticed amazon had dropped the price on it to sub 20 quid you know it was like what was it 18 pounds 68 and i thought oh, okay I'll, I'll go for that so i bought it and i got him um yeah so he's got the, the little gimmick with the uh, the little led that gets brighter the louder you talk and it sort of flickers and flashes and uh, yeah it's a thing um now I knew what I was getting in for when I bought this guy because you know, like he's got like he's got like the stupidly hollow legs. There's nothing to his legs at all. Um, to make him stand up, you have to sort of lock his knees in place because if you unlock his knees, then he doesn't stand up properly. So you have to lock his knees into place to get him to stand up. He's got wafer thin arms. Um, some articulation he's got you no know, like ball jointed shoulders ball jointed elbows ball jointed hips and sort of locking sort of knee joints so he's he's not the most articulated thing and he's very very sort of flimsy and, and you know lightweight and like i said he's hollow and, and all that stuff so yeah 
I knew what I was getting into. So he isn't the greatest figure, but he is a representation of the character, and I quite like the character from the show, and I wanted to get him. And yeah, he's got facial hair and a cowboy hat, you know, so that's good. But he doesn't really have the presence that the the character did from the show, because he was really sort of very bulky and menacing in the show, especially when he's wearing his, his duster. I mean, he's got this sort of coattail thing with the top of his vehicle mode that sort of goes down his back, but it's it's, it's not really a, a full-on, you know, sort of like... Uh, sort of duster is it but anyway so i got the thing and it is what it is and then <laughs> shortly after i bought it i checked up on um, amazon and i noticed they're, they're continuing to drop the price on it so a day after i bought this at uh, you know 18 pound 68 they dropped it to 17 pound 14 and then the following day uh was it 15 pound 58 or 56 and then the day after, they dropped it to £13.38. It's like, I couldn't believe it. If I'd have waited a couple of days, I could have got this thing for less than 14 quid. You know, almost a tenner off what he actually goes for at retail. And I, that, that really upset me, that did. That really, really uh, upset me. I mean, you, you go on there now, and they're asking like 15 quid for him, which is still, again, it's still 10 quid cheaper than the uh, the, you know, the, the regular retail price of these things. So, yeah, yeah. Um, there are things I like about this, but on the whole, he's he's very, very disappointing. But I, I wanted to get in because of the character and because I wanted to see what this gimmick was like. And and yeah, this, this gimmick is just it's just a, a, bl a blinking voice activated LED. It's not like the, the, the bigger figures where they have that motorized sort of armor thing that flips round. I mean that 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 looks amazing, but this figure doesn't do that, <laughs> obviously, because it's it's a slightly smaller, more basic figure. So yeah, I've got hold of him. And, uh, yeah, he's a thing that I bought. And uh, he arrived on the 14th as uh, well as, you know, Heralda. Um, so, next. Bit of a gap then in the middle of the month because I was struggling to buy things. Just couldn't find anything worth buying. And uh, this rolled on until uh, Comic. My monthly Beast Wars comic. I uh, managed to get one and it arrived on the 22nd. So yeah, I got Beast Wars issue four. Again, enjoying this. I like the artwork by uh, you know Josh Bircham. Um, really good comic, uh, a good retelling of the story. They are whipping along the story though. I mean, I don't know how many issues this is going to run out to, but uh, it's 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 good and it's it's got me back into the comics somewhat. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, kind of enjoying those. And then, um, right, this next one. Now, I got a message for a potential viewer who might be watching this video, and it is uh, Brad, Excellian XLR. If you're watching, I know you do sometimes watch my videos, if you're watching this next item, don't, well, please don't read too much into it. Okay? Right. Now, this next item. <laughs> Um, it's a figure that I've been thinking about getting for a while. I would have bought it last year. In fact, I was hoping to pick it up at TF Nation last year, but obviously TF Nation got cancelled. It's probably going to get cancelled this year as well. Um, but it's, um, it's, uh, the, the, the mech of a, my favourite character from, uh, an anime show called, uh, Gumpla Build Divers Re-Rise. See where I'm going with this. Yeah, so there's a character in that who has a a gumpler, and it's uh, it's basically turns into a, like a red dragon, and uh, he calls it Mor Morgiana. But later on, it tra there's, there's this really I really brilliant episode, episode five, where you know the 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 the, the pilot who who who's piloting this figure, he's got a deathly fear of flying, and uh, he's, he's 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 been blasted and he's going to land in this pool of lava and then he has this moment where he has this connection with his gumpla and it spreads its wings and rises like a phoenix from the ashes and it just just blitzes the the air units and then he just takes out one of the ground units by himself and then the final the remaining ground unit all the other guys team up and blast it to bits i love that episode episode five of re-rise absolutely amazing um so i wanted to get the the figure um so 
there we have it. Um, Gumpla build di or, or Gundam build divers re rise. Wow, it's 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 its actual name is Valkylander. Um, but uh, um, the dragon form, as I've got it here, and this is the reason why I bought it because I wanted the dragon because I've got a thing for you no know, transforming dragons. I really like them, and this thing just floats my boat in so many different ways. Um, the the figure's called Valkylander because it's got like a little uh, nesty Gundam inside. Um, to transform it, it's a lot of parts forming because I mean the, the dragon mode is made up of you know it's got like the sword and the shield as part of the tail. And then you've got like a, there's a gun here, there's a gun there, there's more gun pieces here, there's another part of the shield here. So you know it's it's a very, it's a real parts former to transform it. But I bought it for the dragon mode. I bought it for Morgiana, and it looks amazing. I mean it's I mean I like transform I like robotic dragons. It's a transforming figure. It does transform, like I said, but it's got a lot of parts forming involved. It, I love the colours on it. This sort of like, sort of light reddish orangey colour and the the gold accents really really sets it off. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to buy it at TF Nation last year from the Gundam Mad Store, and I wanted to do it in front of Brad. I wanted to buy a Gunpla in front of Brad, but obviously, sadly, I couldn't do it. Um, as this figure came out last year, it's get it's getting kind of hard to find now. And you know, buying it online through Amazon or, or eBay, you know, it's it's people you know usually buying one from overseas, and, and you have to pay the you know the, the the excessive shipping fees. So there was some guy in the UK who had the kit, unbuilt kit, and he was selling it on uh, on eBay for about it was I can't, it was about just under tw just under thirty quid I paid for this, but uh, still, yeah. So. Yeah, I got it. You know, I went and got it. And uh, now, obviously, it came as a kit and you had to build it. Now, <laughs> Gumpla building is could be described as an art form by some people. Some people take it way too seriously. And, um, you know, they go to such lengths to, to make the thing look as realistic as possible. Because technically, these are scale models of, you know, giant robots. Um, but... Uh, I'm not like that, you know, I ain't going to go to all the trouble. The only uh, thing that I did, because there is this thing when you're, when you're cutting the parts off the sprues, you're supposed to use this double cut technique where you're supposed to, instead of cut the part off for the sprue directly, you cut the sprue off from the sprue and then, you know, you then you nip the part off separately. And yeah, I uh, did the double cut technique and I've got all the sprue nubs left over. And uh, as it was a kit... Um, I decided to uh, to time myself doing it, and I've put together a little montage where I was taking photographs while I was doing it, and I'm going to insert it in here so you can see the the build montage that I've done, you uh, know, <laughs> and I've put the time index in the corner so you can see how long it took me to put it together. So have a look at that now. Right, so yeah, you see how long it took. Um, it took uh, one hour, 36 minutes, or about 93 minutes in total for me to put it together. Um, didn't go mad with it, you know. It's a straight build. If you know, if, you know, if you're a Gumpla builder, you know what a straight build is. It's done per the instructions, obviously, you know. You know. I used all the decals because <laughs> you know serious Gunkler builders they never use the decals they always paint the, the details on the figure 
Um, I have got a panel lining pen, but I couldn't be bothered to dig it out because it's in the loft with that um, Flame Toys um, IDW Autobot Megatron kit that I bought. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get this because, no, it's a robotic dragon and it's my favourite character from the show and it just works for me in so many different levels uh, and I wanted to get it. But it's a Gunpla. I've just built a Gunpla and... This is a one-off. I am not going to make a habit of buying these things and building them. This is just a one-off. My, my modelling skills are very limited and I only bought it because of the character <clears throat> and the fact that it does transform. You know, it, it transforms, so I'm classing it as a transforming toy. So, there we go. I bought a Gunpla and I built it, but like I said, don't make too much of this. This is just a one-off thing. And uh, yeah, so Brad, if you're watching... <laughs> Yeah, don't read too much into this. So that arrived on the 22nd. So let's just uh, move on to the last couple of bits. Um, yeah, only two more items. Um, now, uh, another... Now, uh, yeah, another little item that I picked up this month um, from uh, that seller, that eBay seller in um, the Netherlands, Mr. Garut Camaro. Now, I've noticed that... He's just not really worth buying from anymore because I bought a bunch of bots off him last year. You know, I went onto his site and he had a he had a, a shipping fee of about fourteen odd quid, which you could combine. You could buy multiple items from him and reduce the shipping price for the individual items. And and I I did a quite a bit of trade with him last year. However, Brexit's happened, right? So Brexit is now starting to bite. And it's it's causing problems for people shipping from Europe into the UK or delays and expenses that that weren't there before. And as a result, his shipping price has shot up, almost doubled. It's like 20 something quid now. So his shipping fee is too much. And also, when you're looking at buying from his shop now, this whole um, VAT payment thing is affecting his payments, his items, you know, because, um, you know, on eBay... Now, if you but I don't think it. I'm not sure if it affects all items, but the last couple of purchases I've made, international purchases I've made on eBay, I've noticed that you scroll down the payment thing and it says you know 20% VAT payment is applied to this item, you know, and it's so you have to everything I buy from him is now 20% more expensive. So I doubt whether I will be buying much, if anything, from him because all his stuff is now, in my opinion, way too expensive to even bother buying. However, I was looking through his shop and I did see something that he had for sale. Um, it was free shipping, so that was a good thing. Because some of the smaller items he does free shipping on. And um, it's a figure that I haven't got that I kind of wanted. And uh, it's this guy. It's a reissue, Transformers reissue G1. It's frenzy, right? It's frenzy. It's it's. A, I've got like the tech spec with it, and it, it it's frenzy. So it's the reissue cassette. Now I haven't got any of the uh, Soundwave, you know, mini bot cassettes. I've got I've got um, Laserbeak, and I've got um, got G1 Ravage, obviously, but I haven't got Rumble and Frenzy. I haven't got you no know, G1 Ratbat. So, I wanted to get this because, you know, I've got a G1 Soundwave. I've got the Masterpiece one. I've got the Masterpiece ones, but I uh, haven't got the G1. So, I've, I've not handled this, you know, this mould until now, but uh, decided to get it. Um, now, obviously, there's this whole Rumble Frenzy argument, you know. Throughout the fiction... But you know, both the the comics, the uh, cartoons, and the toy lines, there's been discrepancies with the, the color of this character and his naming. Um, now, I, to me, I prefer the blue one, right? I like the blue one. The blue one is my favorite. And to me, this guy will always be Rumble. So <laughs> I know that's wrong. I know that's wrong because when you do a search on eBay for you know G1 Rumble, you get a lot of red characters come up. Some blue ones, but a lot of red ones. And when you do Frenzy, you get a lot of blue ones and some red ones. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. It depends where you look. But, uh, yeah, I decided to get this. And, like I said, I bought him from Garut Camaro. It was about 
20 something quid which when i looked around at the prices of this figure elsewhere it was it was it was you know it was fairly um you know sort of par for the course um so yeah i decided to get this guy and uh so i managed to pick him up and he's like i said because of these expensive reasons that uh, you, know, you know group camaro is just too expensive to buy from um this will probably be the last figure i buy from him so yeah got it from group group camaro in the netherlands off ebay uh g1 frenzy and then i thought that was it i thought that was the end of the month but something else came in another pre-order that i placed back in december and uh yeah it arrived in the last couple of days and uh it's something that i i, I when i saw the reveals of it i just said i've got to have me one of those and uh it's a figure from toy world and it's part of their uh, fs series of um figures that they're doing where they're based on world war one and world war two vehicles and just lately their uh world war one Starscream mold has uh, finally been released in its various colours. But the alt mode, I bought this thing for the alt mode. Look at this. It's a uh, Fokker DR1 Drydecker. It is the the uh, the triplane that was used as the uh, you know the fighter of uh, you know Baron von Richthofen, the uh, the German Imperial German Army fighter race from World War One, and they've just recreated his plane. <laughs> so they they were doing they were going to do a red version of this. I mean, obviously there's a silver Starscream version. They've done a, a a black and purple sort of Skywalk version and a Thundercracker version. But I had to get this one. I had to get the uh, the red Baron, the red Max one, and it's wow. Look at this thing. I can't believe they did this, but they did, and they actually made a transformer of the of the you know the triplane from World War One. It's like what the hell, dude? Um, uh, this figure has got a little bit of a. You can see there, there's a, there's a panel sticking out, and you look on this side, and it's all nice and smooth. Uh, I've got a, a little manufacturing fault on mine where one of the the angled panels that goes alongside the fuselage has been the basically put a right hand panel panel in the left hand slot you know and it's not great um but i still love this thing i love this thing i love this thing so much you know it's just look at that alt mode i mean to me the alt mode is everything on this uh, it, the fact that it transforms is 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 a thing but i just love it for the alt mode it's the fact that it turns into the dr1 you know it's Amazing. I mean, the, the wood effect they've got on the propeller is just awesome. And you know, I haven't got the uh, I haven't got the machine guns on top of the uh, the fuselage plugged in, but absolutely awesome figure. Amazing. I mean, there's a bit of robot kibble underneath, but you know, you got it's got to go somewhere. And the way this the engineering works, the way the wings all fold up to form the chest and the arms, and and it. It's it's pretty good uh, transformation. It's a bit fiddly, but um, you know it's 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 doable in both directions. It's a lot easier to transform back into plane mode from robot mode. But I love this thing. I love this thing so much, and I had to get one. And, and I was fortunate to get hold of one of the uh, the red ones. This thing has shot up in price since it got released. I mean, I paid just over a hundred quid for it, and now you, you'll be lucky to get this thing for like 150, 160 quid. So that is that. Yeah. <laughs> So that's my haul for this month. Um, like I said, some really unusual items, a couple of third party figures. Um, how many official? One, two, three. Only three official figures and then a couple of comics and you know, quite, quite a mixed bag again. Not a, a busting lot of stuff. Now, obviously this year I've been sticking to this £300 budget and I've been going over my finances and it turns out that the changes I made for the, the you know the money that I put into the household account to pay the household bills has kind of balanced the books somewhat, and I, I think I'm still you know saving money, and I think I might be able to go back to well temporarily go back to my four hundred pound budget next month. So I'm going to try it just just to be on the the uh, on the what's it side, and I'm probably going to buy two Korean toys next month as well. I've got two figures in in. In, in mind to get 
Um, so I mean, I bought two Korean toys this month, and it was no big deal. And uh, yeah, so I'll probably buy two next month as well. So there you go. That's my haul for this month, and uh, all I got to do is my uh, first and worst. So, let's do this. First and worst. So, I mean, come on. I mean, warts and all, you know, I love this thing. I love this thing so much. I mean, yeah, it's got like a slight engineering fault, but I can get around that. I, I can, you know, I can see past that. And I just love the uh, the alt mode on this thing. It's just amazing. And then this guy. Um, <laughs> now, like I said, Sky was in the running, but when I, I looked at it, I looked at these two figures together, and it's like, I much prefer to, to have this than this. And that's basically what it all boils down to. I mean, this thing's so hollow and flimsy, and I like the character, don't get me wrong, but this is not the best representation of that character. You know, it's, it's a bit of a... I don't know, it, 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 it's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> it's like a disrespecting figure of uh, of uh, Wild Wheel, really, you know, in, in any shape of the word. Um, so, yeah, this is the worst thing that I got this month. And uh, that is is it for this month. Um, again, 45 minutes, not done too bad. Um, so, yeah, I will catch you next month. And uh, we'll see see what that brings. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm kind of struggling to buy things at the moment, but I'm going to have to have a long hard look at what I want and what's available and where, and sort of weigh up the prices and uh, see how we go from there. But uh, with that said, I've been TFI Wilderness. I will catch you all next time. Ta-da!